All right, let's actually start this campaign. Cal, I'll mute myself. All right. So, let's change our music back to our favorite jazz. As we enter yeah. the town. Um, so, Ash, Tordek, you're hanging out, having witnessed Brosif, the cloud giant, take off Brolish, formerly known as Grolish, and Drusilia off on their brotastic journey. So, uh, as you're walking down the street, uh, looking for the Emerald Enclave location there to tell them, hey, I completed my mission, um, which is something you need to do to report to get, you know, kind of let them know that the mission has been completed. It's not anything to worry about. No more resources need to be donated towards this. You, um, you're walking down the street and you happen to see, walking together side by side, heading your way as if by a crazy random happenstance, uh, your companions, Ash, from earlier, Shannon, the halfling, and Scarlet, the human fighter, with a few more scars than before, but looking as tough as ever, you two see a Fabio-esque bro with a dwarf in a baby Bjorn on his back. Bro, 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 bro. Yeah, bro, what's up, bro? Just yelling, bro, in the oh, background. Just yelling, they're just yelling, bro. And then you also see your familiar elven-esque companion, Ash, on the back of basically the same Fabio-esque type guy, except with long, flowing white hair and basically these dark-lensed <laughs> glasses that he wears, uh, on ha carrying her on a makeshift palanquin that only he can carry, that, that is only one person, and she's kind of riding on that as they walk down the street towards you. What would you guys... Actually, as you're doing this and seeing this, you're like, yeah, and then <laughs> wind picks up and you get smacked in the face by a card. How many times would either of you like to draw from the deck of many things? One and done. Okay. <laughs> Shannon? Uh, how many can I do? There's 22 cards in the deck. I'll go for two. <laughs> All right. So... Uh, Scarlet decided first, so Katie, go ahead and roll me a d22. 16. Alright, here we go. Um, what does a 16 get you? Uh, there's 22 cards in the deck. 22, 21, 20, 19, 18, 17, 16. Uh... <laughs> I'm so scared. Let me just make sure I read the right one. Because if not, guess what this journey might be doing? Somebody might be tracking down somebody else's soul. <laughs> no. Um, possibly. John, the Ace of Spades. Um. Okay, thank you. Uh, so, uh, right now, while this happens, I'm gonna have Shannon roll me first here. So, I'll tell you right now, Scarlet, uh, you got the Don John. You are, I'll, I'll read them as they are read, and we'll see what happens. You disappear, and are entombed in a state of suspended animation in an extra-dimensional sphere. Everything you were wearing and carrying stays behind in the space you occupied when you disappeared. You remain imprisoned until you are found and removed from the sphere. You can't be located by any divination magic, but a wish spell can reveal the location of your prison. You draw no more cards. Let me finish. Bye. Let me finish. <laughs> and Shannon drew the skull card. You summon an avatar of death. A ghostly humanoid skeleton clad in a tattered black robe carrying a spectral scythe. It appears in a space of my choice within 10 feet of you 
and attacks you, warning all others that you must win the battle alone. Oh, you great. Fight the awesome. avatar until it or you drops to zero hit points, upon which it disappears. If anyone tries to help you, it summons its own avatar of death to fight them. Um, <laughs> creature slain by the avatar of death can't be returned to life. I'm ready to roll a new character. It's cool, guys. Uh, so what type of creature, I guess? <laughs> um, well, we'll have you draw your next, you know what, draw your next card right now. We'll see what happens, but you have to fight this guy. What's your HP, by the way, Shannon? Um, it is 69, I believe. So he has 34 HP. He has half of your hit points. I'm just going to fireball him. Cool. Um, okay. Go ahead. Um, actually, that might work extraordinarily well. He's actually not that tough, realistically. Uh, that was the shittiest fireball I've ever fireballed. Yeah, dude, that was a. Yeah, wow, that was rough. Um, yeah, that. Uh, he has no proficiency with any saving throws. So, yeah, okay, fireball goes off, and, uh, he takes 21 points of fire damage. He's looking pretty rough, <laughs> uh, because he has your HP, so, um, now it's his turn. Uh, and he, all right, so he's gonna swing with his spectral scythe, um, but he just automatically hits... Cause that's how he works uh and he's gonna deal this was a weird set of rolls guys but it's all for the kids folks it's all for the kids don't forget that you take nine points of damage as he sweeps his scythe through it's your turn now <laughs> i don't get to like he just automatically hits me yeah he just automatically hits because it's a spectral scythe so it just swings actually through you um, so no dodge at all. Um, I am going to fireball him again. Okay, go ahead. In the middle of the streets, people are like freaking out because a death avatar got summoned and somebody just disappeared. Um, Suck it, skeleton. <laughs> yeah, so he fails... Uh, and you blow up the the avatar of death. He's dead. He's gone. You win. That was way... In my head when I first read these, I thought they were way tougher. But I guess if you fight them later on when they have half your HP, they're a lot more difficult. That was way easy. Unless I read something awesome. wrong, but guess what? I'm not going back to double check. <laughs> so... Uh, 19, 22, 21... I feel like I probably caught some people in the crossfire of those fireballs, but oh well. Yeah, I'm just gonna say no, because I don't want to deal with having you have to murder innocent people and deal with law enforcement. I've already had to do that once in the past two weeks with my other campaigns, so we're just gonna not do that. Um, you know what, I'm gonna have you roll that d22 again, because we've already had this one happen, and it kind of doesn't affect too much. So... Rolled an 11. No, I'm sorry, I read the wrong one. That was me. An 11. All right. Guess. Good catch. Well, the first one would have been interesting, but we think we already had it. Although it would have probably made you a villain, like you wanted. Switching all of your uh, alignments, so you'd go from evil to good, or good to evil. Um, the Halfling Queen. Oh no. Oh no. I am so sorry for this one. You draw the Ace of Clubs. Every magic item you wear or carry disintegrates. No! <laughs> oh 
I'm sad right Sorry. now. I'm gonna take all the Scarlet stuff. <laughs> You're gonna try to pick up my freaking great axe? Are you serious? <laughs> Make everything. Wow. Checking one thing. This has been an interesting campaign, folks. I'm just throwing it out there. This is what Deck of Many Things do. Sometimes great things happen. Sometimes bad things happen. Man, I wish we could have saved one of those wishes. That's what I'm looking for. <laughs> I'm gonna use one of my hundred dollar donations that I have that was unspecified to um, make a wish uh, as the dungeon master and my wish is to reverse time which is a thing I can do with a wish to before you drew from the deck of many things okay I'm still gonna make you draw from it again but we're gonna pretend that that one didn't happen okay <sighs> So there we go. How many times you're So how many times would you like to draw from the deck of many things? One time. One and done. <laughs> one and done. <laughs> oh, by the way, Justin just left with my pizza. Thank you, Justin, for delivering it. Five minutes ago. Justin. He's left five minutes ago. These guys are on fire, man. They know what they're doing. They're professionals. That's right. Alright, I'm gonna roll this now. Okay, go ahead. Sorry, uh, Benzyme, I didn't want to ruin the whole game for these people who just are staying up at midnight to help me out here. Uh, but I appreciate what you do, and it all goes to the kids. Uh, Mitch was only preparing it, guys. You can't blame Mitch. He was just making the pizza. Uh, you said a five? Yep, five. Okay. If you single-handedly defeat the next hostile monster, you gain a level. Okay. I like that one, like, a bazillion times better. That's fair. Uh, all right. Shannon, how many would you like to draw? I'll just do one this time. <laughs> all right. <laughs> You've learned your lesson. Go ahead and roll me a one, uh, 1d22. <laughs> no! I want my magical <laughs> items! <laughs> oh... I'll be nice and say because technically when you draw a card from a deck of many things, the other ones disappear from the deck. So we'll make this as if you rolled a 10. Because it would technically be a 1d21, not a 1d22. Okay. Technically, which I should have had you roll. That was my mistake. Uh, so actually, I guess this would be if you rolled a... Nope, it's going to be as if you rolled a 10. Because a 9 traps your soul in a gourd, and I'm not doing that again. <laughs> Uh, Only one can have that fate. Yes. So guess what happens? Magically, in front of you, in a clang of metal, 25 pieces of jewelry appear worth 2,000 gold each. What? 25? 25, 25 worth 2, pieces of jewelry worth 2,000 gold each just appear at your feet. I feel like this is a trap, but I'm going to take it off. You're rich. Congratulations. You picked the card of gems. Nice. Scarlet's gonna be like, oh, you know, since I gave you that ring earlier, could I have one? So, yeah. You have 25. You can decide what kind of jewelry. Each one is worth 2,000 gold each. You guys all see this happen. Uh, there's gonna be a gem-encrusted collar for Jericho, and he's gonna look fancy. As oh! Ah. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Deck of many things happened. Uh, Fifty thousand gold worth of jewelry. Can I just call buy a house and call it a day? <laughs> You're done adventuring. <laughs> you can, although you do still have another three hours. You, as as Laura, do for the next. It's just three me hours. housekeeping. Oh, I think my pizza's here. Yes. Woo! I'll, I'll be right back. Pizza! Yeah! Get it! Um, roleplay stuff. I'll be right back. <laughs>
Uh, I'm role playing, gathering up all of my jewelry so nobody takes it. Scarlet's still bugging you to give her a piece, and she gave I you her ring you earlier. Oh, I didn't hear you. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Yes, in the background. Bro, 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 bro. So Scar yeah, apparently we. I I see you guys. Hey, <laughs> how how have you been? What are you what are you doing? Are you, is that jewelry? No, there's there's no jewelry here. You see no jewelry. And she's like mm -hmm. shoving it in her bag of holding. It's it's fine. I'm okay <laughs> with with it. You can. That's all yours. So, how was how was Arena? It was, it was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> I beat up so many douchebags. You wouldn't even believe it. I got this black eye, and I got this cut over here. It's gonna heal up so badass. False nice. Alarm. Who was uh, it? It's not good. It was my doorbell's broken, so I can't actually hear if they ring the doorbell. That's I, what dogs are for. Well, I thought I heard him walking up the steps because that's actually the only way I can tell. I just made it up. That was nothing. <laughs> now I know I, what I, dogs I, go I think through. you're hungry. <laughs> I feel like a dog. Like what was that? Okay, Jake right. was not that fast here. So. Do better, Jake. Yeah. Okay, right. if I just heard that and it was actually him just now, I'm gonna be so pissed. Suspense. Mm. <laughs> so, um, <clears throat> what have you guys been talking about? Oh, well, just about, you know, what we've been doing since we last saw each other. Fair. Did you fill them in on everything that happened with Gordon? Mm, not yet. Oh. I, uh... That's it. <laughs> Dog doorbell. Hold that thought. Am I holding it or am I role-playing it? <laughs> Wait, I mean, you can tell, you can just say it because Laura's yeah. the only one who doesn't know what's going on. Um, well, I got the emerald egg back and I point to my the little baby dragon. Um, her name is Els Elsmerada Broski, E.B. for short. Broski. <laughs> and uh, okay, and um, well, do you remember the old blind man? Gourd guy. Yes, the the gourd guy. I saw some of his gourds. Yes, you do. Um, so I decided to go ahead and ask him, hey, we could take you back home. And he was like, yeah, sounds good. And, well, we made a long journey over there. And um, we met another friend. Um, and I point to Rogoth over there. And uh, he helped um, his blindness so he could see. And I'm afraid something might have been unleashed. Um, when he got his eyesight back, one eye was orange and the other one was black. <laughs> was it like a weird tiger? Like what was just an orange tiger and one was just a black tiger or something? That, that, that's yeah, like his his eyes, his eye color. And you know how he was like all kind of hunched over and everything like just like a elderly man? He, he's really sweet. Yeah, he stand up straight and had this weird just this offset. And um apparently his farm disappeared. And the town don't know anything of it. How does a farm just up and disappear? This is wigging me out, bro. I Whoa, agree. <laughs> wigging out, bro. Oh, and we got... And I point to the barbarians. Um, yeah, they're, they're bros. Tordek makes his way over drinking wine. Yes. 
Scarlet's gonna go and try to chest bump them with um, uh, her hello of bros! And they're both like, bro! And then they come running over, and it's like a, an epic triple chest bump, like, and another, yet another bro. epic thunder wave of broness throughout the lands. You actually hear windows and like tchotchkes rattling in houses all throughout Neverwinter as just this epic bro force. A unition, a unation. Blah, 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 blah. These bros have united. It's great. I feel so <laughs> at home with my bros. You do, and they feel so at home with you. Cannon just looks <laughs> disgusted at the display of broness. I don't notice because I'm too wrapped notice. up in broing. Yeah. <laughs> it's great. You guys get along instantly. There's an instant bond. Um. They just want to bro down and be bros together. Let's go. Let's go to the tavern and bro out. <laughs> um. So, is that what you would like to do? Right now, bro. Um. Well, you guys can you can split up if you want. Um, Ash, you do still need to head to the Emerald Enclave to let them know uh, that your mission has been completed. Yeah, I'll return the um the horses too. <laughs> Because you don't need him anymore. No. So, yeah, I go over there and um, I I look for somebody and uh, I'll just say, you know, turn these horses um, and my mission has complete and I and pet EB. Mm. Okay. Gotcha. Uh, so you go and they're like, was true. That is absolutely phenomenal. It's, it's a little gnome. He's like, oh my goodness, that is wondrous. No one has seen an emerald dragon for, for centuries. This is amazing. And I'll have to tell everybody that they owe me 200 gold because I said that you were telling the truth and they thought you were lying. <laughs> well, they didn't know to trust you as much as I did. You are. Well, thank you so much. We have stuff here for you. And they he pulls out a container and he says this is for completing your task and preventing a such a legendary wondrous creature of nature from falling into the wrong hands and he opens up there and there are a handful of potion bottles and a cloak let's say a cloak Ooh. Mm -hmm. it's any color you want it to be because as you take it out you realize it can change colors at will Ooh. Cool. It's a cloak uh, of protection. Uh, nice. With a plus one to your AC and to all your saves, and it has the unique ability that it can change color at any time. Cool. I go ahead and I put it on, okay. and it changes colors like like that. Mm -hmm. Whatever color you like want. Like what? No, it's it, it's it, going. It, yeah. Huh? No, I was gonna say like if you're like I want it to be green, it's green. Yep, it's green. And you're like, I want it to be red right now. It's red. Like, whatever color you want, it immediately changes. It, 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 it matches it Eevee. Yeah. Right. Um, and there are two superior healing potions in there. Oh, cool. Those are 8d4 plus 8. Yeah, I think I have a little... Yep, here it is. Mm -hmm. So, you have your potions... And you have your cloak, and they say, Thank you very much for your service to the Enclave. We will notify you if we have any other missions in the future. Thank you. Uh, as you guys are heading to the bar, um, you make your way into the tavern, and you're like, Round a drink for my bros! And, and Tyr and Bob are like, Yeah, bros, drinking! And Tordex like, Wine! I got all my wine! Excited! Yep. <laughs> you know. Got me wine? And then Scarlet's like, yeah, I need wine too, or drinks or whatever, and everybody's broing out. And then you hear, like, a door swing open from the back. And you hear, no way, bro. And you, you see <laughs> Bob and Tyr turn and be like, Brodian? Brodian, you're here? Oh my god. And he comes running over, and he looks at Scarlet and's like, you are my new best bro. I think you should ride on my back. And Bro. You, you have a donation from Tyr for the third of the bros, a cousin <laughs> of both 
Tyr and Bob Brodian a mount for you, a barbarian mount for you as well. The fourth bro. Okay, she is going to try to mount him gracefully. No! Um, You try to like jump on his back and he like turns around to be like, to give you like a bro hug and it's like this weird embrace. And like, you basically just flying crotch slam into this guy. And he's like, bro? bro? And he like sets you back down and he's like, bro, I don't, bro, I don't know. I mean, when I said mount, like I meant you could ride on my back. Like I don't, bro. Whoa, bro, bro, I'm sorry, party foul. <laughs> and he's like, all right, bro, everything's cool. And he, buy, he like hands you a drink. <laughs> Thanks, bro. And then, like, you guys just continue drinking. <laughs> One day. One what day. I'm trying to find the owner of this establishment. Um, okay. Uh, you find the owner of this establishment. It is a portly uh, human man who is behind the bar. And he says, what can I do for you? How much to buy this tavern? <laughs> Business woman. And he says, oh, excuse me? I want to buy you a tavern. Well, it has been. Like, come up to it. Yeah. You're, like, peeking above the bar, like, just this much. And he's like, um, well, I wasn't really planning on selling it. I retired from adventuring to own this tavern, but that's fine. He goes, business has been, well, because the only way to describe it is bro of late. Um, <laughs> which is fine. They do drink a lot, but the mess I have to clean up afterwards is, hmm. Because I tell you what, for 50,000 gold, I will sell you this bar, no questions asked. All assets will be transferred to you. And that will be that. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, um, give up, like, kind of climb up on the bar and, like, do a sexy pose and, like, wink <laughs> at him and be like, 50,000. That seems a little steep for all the broiness that's going around here. How about, how about we go for 45,000? Go ahead and roll me a persuasion. I forgot. Do that I, place. do I hear any of this? Yeah, you hear all of this. I'm not trying to be stealthy. I jump on the table and yell out. Bro! As I point over there and says, Give me your most expensive bottle! Um, That's a 17. So a 17, um, <laughs> you, let's see how he does. He's like, ah, uh, for you, for you, I think we could do 45,000. He goes, you are... Damn, you are the most. <laughs> I wink at him again, and I give and him. And he's like, he like, he fawns. He's like, ah. uh, <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, yeah, but whatever. And he's like, totally absorbed in you. And he like reaches around behind him, grabs a bottle off the shelf, and like hands it like off to the side to Tordek, and just like not even paying attention, just hands it to you. Doesn't even charge you. Just hands you the bottle. Uh, before he goes, I'm like, oh wait. That's gonna be ten gold, please, for that bottle. <laughs> so Tordex, she stops you and says, "This, this is her bar now." <laughs> All right, bro. <laughs> okay. Right. She's not a real good bro. <laughs> he could have haggled. Bro's gotta make a business. He accepted. Uh, I give him, I give him the forty-five thousand dollars, forty-five thousand gold and worth of jewelry. And he's like. I'll be out of here tomorrow. Unless awesome. you want me to stay. No, I would like you to manage this bar still. You can still manage it, but now I own it. There's nothing I would rather do, as you wish. <laughs> and I, I give him another wink and I blow him a kiss. And he like he he like his anime style nosebleed and falls over. <laughs> And then oh, I walk back so over good. to the group and I'm like, hey guys, guess who owns this bar now? <laughs> do, do I like finally like find them or walk in? You walk in to see the guy's nose start bleeding and fall over. That's when you walk in. 
Shannon, did you yeah. do anything to him? Did I give anything to him? No, did you do anything to him? I didn't do anything at all. I just gave him a little winky. And uh, he, he looks very fa infatuated with me, I guess. All right. Um, so what's everybody up to? Well, I own this bar can... now. You own it? My bar. <laughs> wow. Oh, because... Okay. Nice. Nice. A good and <laughs> good in investment. I am a shrewd businesswoman. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, she already made ten gold. <laughs> um, can I um try to jump up onto my mount again with him assisting me, so with advantage, and then shotgun a uh, beer? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Considering cans don't exist, we'll allow it anyway. But <laughs> an eighteen, sure. Um, he yes. he's like, "Are you ready, bro?" I'm ready, bro. And he's like, "Get ready." He's like, "You could do this." And he like turns around and he like readies himself, and you jump and you look like you're gonna overshoot it, but he like stands up and like catches your legs, so you land like perfectly, and then like. As you do that, like, as you're landing on him, he he reaches down at the bar and, like, hits the bar and the beer flies up and you catch it. And you just, for all intents and purposes, shotgun this beer out of a mug, however that works. You put Don't your hand it. over the top to form suction and poke a hole in the bottom of the mug and shotgun this beer. She finishes it and then looks at uh, Shannon and goes, I'll pay for that. <laughs> <laughs> Tordic looks at Tyr and goes, Bro, I give that a 10. Yeah, bro. Like, 10 out of 10. For real. I? Uh, by the way, uh, Brodian also, um, he is, uh, he's muscle bound. He's a gladiator uh, with a gladiator mask, and he does wear armor. He wears armor. He's not like a, like a shirtless bro like the other guys. Just as a point of fact, since that's what the donation said. Okay. I'll help him shine it so he can look his best and bro he is. <laughs> Absolutely. So, um, you are now in this bar, Ash, with your, with your new Emerald Dragon companion, um, hanging out in Shannon's bar, which she can name whatever she wants now. Um, um, what was the name originally? I don't actually know because I didn't tell you what it was called. So, uh, it was... No, I'm drawing a blank. Oh, whatever. I'm gonna name it the Halfling Queen. Okay. And we're in Neverwinter, right? Yes. Okay, cool. This is a very popular area of Neverwinter, so you will see probably a lot of traffic to your bar. She needed a backup plan in case all of her magic items disintegrated again. She's just <laughs> gonna leave and go run the bar. <laughs> Fair. Um, uh, so. What is even happening? Um, <laughs> so you guys are hanging out in the Halfling Queen, the newest and currently broiest bar in all of Neverwinter. But you guys are in Neverwinter. This is one of the biggest cities all of you have ever been in. There's literally almost anything you could want to find exists in Neverwinter. Oh, well, that's so great because I have this really expensive piece of jewelry and I want better armor. Okay. So you guys can... That's what you're more than welcome to do now that you've shotgunned your beer and successfully... Uh, yes. Uh, Benzyme, yes, they were... Uh, but they were a wish was used to rewind time. So they technically you got two for the price of one. Initially, uh, Scarlet was transported to an extra dimensional sphere where she would be trapped forever. Um, until she could, uh, until someone could find the sphere and rescue her from her extra dimensional prison. Shannon fought an avatar of death and then had all of her magical items disintegrated. So, a wish was used to rewind time before they did that and made them draw again. 
Scarlet will get an automatic level if she kills the next monster that they encounter completely on her own with no help from any others. Uh, Shannon got... What did you get? You got just the... Just the oh, just the 25... Or 25, 2,000 gold value worth of pieces of jewelry dropped at her feet. Oh, pretty sweet. And then she, I bought a bar. And then she just used it to buy a bar that she's renamed the Halfling Queen. Um, so... Uh, what would you all like to do um, at the time being? Things seem okay. You don't really have a direction at the current moment. You found th the main quest of this 24-hour campaign was completed in about 30 <laughs> seconds with a wish. Uh, so... Um, so good. Where's, where's uh, Rogar? Oh, he's there in the bar. He's hanging out. He's drinking, like, a wine in the corner with you guys hanging around. So, I feel like somebody should go kill a rat real quick. <laughs> it has to be a hostile orgy creature. Just to I'll steal its there. cheese. A vicious rat. <laughs> <clears throat> no, um, Scarlet is gonna be like, bros, it's been brotastic. I have some shopping to do. And she's just gonna point towards the door and say, mush, bro. And, <laughs> and he's like, alright, bro. He picks you up. And lead you out of the bar. Uh, Shannon heard the word shopping, and she follows you. All right. Shannon on her little halfling legs, or with Jericho because she has a dog. I keep forgetting. I'm gonna. This, gonna the take only Jericho. actual mount of the mounts in this party. Everybody else are just humans, or a cloud giant, um, <laughs> that carry people around. That's quite interesting. Uh, so, you head out of the bar. And you're looking for an armor, armor at the moment. Yep. Okay. Um, I would tell you there's there's a mercantile district in Neverwinter, where there is prop there's an armor shop, a weapon shop, a magic item shop, a mount shop, which really won't come into play so much for you guys because your mounts are people. Um, there's a magic item shop. There is like a potion shop. Uh, all, all manner of things. So. Okay. Um. Is does would she know anything if there's like uh, the magic shop? Would that sell magical armor, or is the, would in that this still case, be this, the armor? That would be more like wondrous items and things. Mm -hmm. um, it would be the armor would have magic armor. Okay, well I'm gonna go to the armor, and I'm gonna take this little sexy lady with me to haggle. <laughs> Fair. <laughs> Gotta hope that it's a boy. Uh, it can work on girls too, can it? Uh, no, the charm only works on members of the opposite sex. Uh, okay. Let's pray. All right, I'm gonna have you, Scarlet, roll me a 1d2. One being a male, two being a female. It's a male. <laughs> I like they both. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're gonna get a great price. All right, so you walk in, and there's a dwarf behind the bar. Uh, behind the bar, behind the counter. And you see just mannequins all over the place, shields and things like that, just with all these fanciful armors in different colors and different designs and different styles of armor, all the way from studded leather all the way up to full plate. Um, you name it, he's got it. All right, uh, so she's going to dismount as is polite in society and <laughs> approach and the counter. Like, Go get him, bro. Get your armor. She fist bumps before she walks away. And he's like, yeah, bro. <laughs> <laughs> so she's going to go at the counter and be like, well, hello there, good sir. I'm in the market for some armor. I was wondering if you wanted to trade for this little number. Um, and you pull out your piece of jewelry? Yep. Uh, and he's a dwarf, so he kind of eyes it over and then looks at it and goes, Oh, yeah, I bet I could probably do something for you if you're... What, what were you looking for? What did you have in mind? Something strong. Something that's better than the rest. Let me see what you have first and what the best of your best, and then I'll pick from there. Okay. Uh, so... Um, did you have, let me just ask you this out of game, did you have a style of armor? Plate mail, splint mail, something like that you were looking for specifically? Um, no, not really. I mean, she's not really concerned about being quieted or anything, so 
She doesn't plate. really need it to be like fancy looking either, though. Okay. Well, plate would give you the best armor class. That would be an 18 at the base. Um, so he has. Um, he'll basically tell you because uh, why not? Um, he has some. We'll say some plus one uh, plate mail. So that would be a 19 AC. Um, he has some plate mail of resistance. Um, roll me 2d10 real quick. An 8 and a 5. One of them is resistant. Uh, the armor when worn gives you resistance to psychic damage. The other one gives you resistance to lightning. Mm. <laughs> Fanny goes, uh, oh, I got this. I made it myself. It's, uh, it's pretty fantastic, if I do say so myself. And this is a set of dwarven plate armor. Dwarven plate armor, as you very well know, is plate armor that gives you a plus two to your AC, so that's a 20 AC. Uh, and it grants you, um, Resist. It helps you uh, on saving throws to be pushed, uh, like when you're, someone's trying to shove you. Um, no matter, uh, you can use a reaction to reduce the distance you're pushed by ten feet. So if somebody tries to shove you back five feet, you're just like, nah, bro. That's exactly what she'd be like too. I, I, I gathered. Um. By the way, Shannon's just making sexy poses, like in the corner, like, trying to catch the eye of the dwarf. Alright, go ahead and make me a persuasion check. <laughs> a 35. He just looks at you, and he, like, was trying, he's like, was literally, like, you could see, he's like, the smoke coming out of his ears as he was trying to focus on the sail. But it's like hurting his brain so much to just not gawk at Shannon in the corner that he takes the thing like absentmindedly, like tongue lolled out, like glassy, starry eyed, paying attention to her, just reaches over, like fumbles about a little bit and grabs the piece of jewelry and just says, take what you want. And he just watches. She's taking the dwarven plate armor. So you now have 20 AC. <laughs> Uh, and best part about Dwarven Plate, it's non-attunement. Oh my god, this is the most beautiful moment. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, She's gonna be like, great doing business with you. Uh, yeah, sure. well, I one, you great, whatever. Uh, and he just stares. <laughs> like, uh, 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 as he watches uh, Shannon dance. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna like give him a wink and be like, "Hey, I own the halfling queen. If anybody comes from there, you should give him a good deal on stuff." He goes, uh, "Yeah," and he's just like enthralled by you. But... Thirty-five. <laughs> <laughs> Get out of here. <clears throat> uh, well, <laughs> she's just gonna take her armor and just dip out and be like Shannon, come on, come on I'm gonna buy you a drink, you're amazing Go with Um, it. and uh, Brodian's like bro, that's some sweet armor, bro bro, you don't even know plus two, you kidding me? and he's like, what's plus two? <laughs> sure, bro whatever that means <laughs> um, so you have your armor as he's helping you put it on because it takes a little while you um you put it on and something falls out of like the chest plate of the armor and hits the ground guess what it's a ring roll me a d30 <laughs> okay oh we already got this one which i forgot about Herrick, what what ring did I say you had? I forget. Um, good. Was it like clouds? It was a cloud. Okay. Yes, yeah, so it was clouds. So roll me another d30. I forgot.
forgot about it entirely. Me too. I'll put it in here. Um, all right. This ring has a strange symbol that you're not aware of, but it looks for those of you that are not in a game universe. Uh, a light bulb. You don't know what this okay. symbol looks like. It's an infinity ring on one side and a light bulb on the other. Having seen that Shannon didn't get cursed from the first one, she's just gonna. Can I do a sleight of hand to see if Shannon doesn't notice it? Sure. <laughs> What's your passive perception, Shannon? It's 12. So you do. You slip on this ring. Alrighty. What we got? I'm so sorry, because this is one of the, the lamer ones, but that's their thing. Uh, this ring glows in the dark as long as you're awake. <laughs> I'm okay with that because I can't see in the dark though. Oh, there you go. Um, it's basically like the equivalent of a glow stick, but in a ring that's on permanently as long as you're awake. Bro, the, the bro raves. So like you can't see it during the day. It's useless. As long as you're awake though, it's lit up. Um, it doesn't dispel magical darkness, but you have it. So, like, you don't actually know. You put it on, you're like, eh, you can't really tell because you're outside in the daylight. But as soon as you walk into the Halfling Queen and the light is a little bit dimmed, you see the, the kind of yellowish-green luminescent glow on this ring. I am pleased because <laughs> that means I can stay up and fight in the dark, kind of, but with squinting. Yeah, I'll say it'll give you enough. It'll give you enough light that if you're fighting something within, five, like, if you're within five feet of something, you can see it. So, like, immediately around you, you can see. But, like, beyond, so you can hit stuff normally within attacking range. But, like, you can't, if something's ten feet away, you can't see it. You'd have to move and hope that you're heading in the right direction. All right. I'm pleased. So, congratulations. <laughs> Thank um, you. So... You guys have returned to the Halfling Queen. While they were doing that... Before they come back, I'd yes. like to do something. Yes, I was going to say, what are, what are Tordek and Ash doing while they're out shopping? Alright, so... Is there any beer pong going on? Fuck it, sure. Is there a wager happening? There absolutely is a wager happening. These are bros. So what are the odds on the uh, losing guy? Uh, I mean, right now, the only people in the bar really are your guys, like you, because... It's just, it's too bro -y for the non-bros. Damn, bro. So, like, everybody else left. So, it's Tyr, it's Bob, <laughs> it's Ash, it's Rogarth, and it's you. And I go EB. to a different bar <laughs> that has more people playing beer pong. Um, <laughs> all right, as sure. I, hey, as I walk down the streets, can I kind of, like give like finger guns and like winks to all the guys that I see and tell them to go to the Halfling Queen. You absolutely can. And like as you're walking towards it, there's like like in a cartoon when like the Pied Piper or like there's a there's a, um there's a pie and like the cartoon character smells the pie trail and they float following the pie trail. That's sort of like everybody you meet is kind of like floating, gawking, following you down the street as you head towards your bar. <laughs> Cause why not? Do um, I see them coming? Sure, you do. Let's say as you walk out, you see that happening down the street as they're heading towards you. Well, I'm going to wait because they're probably going to come here and play beer pong. Okay, that's true. Uh, do I have plans, I though. I have do. plans. Yeah. So, Ash, what are you up to? Um, I actually wanted to talk to Rogoth. Okay, sure. Yeah. What would you like to talk to him about? Um, so, basically, I just want to look at him and, and, and say, you know, um, well, this is what I looked for, came and looked for, and here she is. And he'll take a look at, uh, at EB, and he says, wow, this is indeed a, and he kind of, like, reaches over, and she's very receptive to him, kind of being able to see that his true form is that of a copper dragon. Um, and he says, well, this is, I'm glad you were able to rescue her from, uh, from the hands of whoever had captured her. That is a, indeed a boon to all of the realms as dragon kind as well. Um, how lucky for us to have found those wishes. Uh, yeah, very lucky. So Lucky indeed. 
It seemed that oh, the lady who smiles has smiled upon us this day. It is wondrous to see uh, her favor in the world as we travel. And this is just, just indeed, I'm just overjoyed to see that this creature has has made it and has survived and has a great caretaker. It seems she's taken quite a liking to you. Yep, she has. And I, you know, nudge her. And she's kind of like, it's like, she's like, I imagine that this dragon is a lot like a cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but not like a total asshole. She's, she's like a cat, but like a super good cat, let's say. Because she's a dragon and she's possibly more intelligent than most of the party um actually let me see i will tell you well she has a 13 a intelligence. 13 she's smarter yeah. than you yeah <laughs> <laughs> so your little wormling baby dragon is smarter than you smarter I don't than, care. Than, than it's the, adorable than the cleric <laughs> uh what are, what's what's everybody else's intelligent i'm so just curious scarlet and shannon what are your intelligences uh 13 Okay, she's as intelligent as Scarlet. I have a 14. All right, so she's only just, Shannon is just smarter than the one, less than one day old hatch dragon. Um, <laughs> oh, she is, is smarter than all of the bros. We, it's safe to say. All, all that booze, uh, man, it does something to you. Yeah. Uh, I... Yeah, Tyr, more, more like, like an, a very, a very good mixture of a cat and a dog, we'll say. Because um, she's nimble and light and, and kind of likes to cuddle like a cat does, like around your neck and things like that. But loyal and defensive and things like a dog. So it's a per- it's really, it's the perfect pet, let's be honest. Mm -hmm. um, also, it eventually will be able to talk to you, and it has magic breath weapons. So really, it is the perfect pet. <laughs> um, it is. So, yeah, he, he says, well, what, now that you found this, what's next for you? Well, uh, to be honest, I would like to go back home, but something, something still bothers me, especially after what happened to you when you were trying to, well, you healed him and he got his eyes back. And now he's somewhere. That is indeed worrisome. I have a feeling we haven't seen the last of Gordon. Yeah. So, I suppose our next course of action is to try to track him down and, and, and see what is... Perhaps we can, in, the, in Neverwinter, perhaps we can find some information on this Gordic cult of Gordic magic perhaps put a stop to him before anything too extreme happens. I agree. Well, as you guys are talking about this, um, the the bro train makes its way <laughs> into the bar. Scarlet rocking this fantastic set of new armor that is, it is both functional and like extremely sturdy and honestly, because I'm going to allow it, because you're only here for another couple hours, it looks exactly however you want it to look is how it looks. It can be as protective as revealing whatever you want it to be, but it is a full 20 AC regardless of the design. So She just wants something that makes, it's almost like it has elbow pads. She just wants to look very, just like her shoulders wider. She wants to look more buff in this armor. She does, absolutely, without a doubt. Um... So, I'm assuming they start to play beer pong, right? Yes, they start to play beer pong. I, uh, go to Shannon. Train. Yes. Shannon, I got a proposal for you. If it's another proposal of marriage, I'm, I'm sorry, I've already gotten like 16 today. Not that kind of proposal. <laughs> it's a profitable proposal. I'm, I'm always in for a profitable proposal. So, if we hold wagers for this beer pong going on, I start whispering. I could always cast War God's Blessing on the person that's supposed to win. Are you saying to cheat? Uh, not exactly cheating, it's more of... Divine intervention. Yeah. The gods will decide who wins. 
like, uh, see what you're going for. And, uh, sure. Sure. All right. Let's do this. Oh, what? All right. Homer, I got you. I got you, bro. When you get in here. Thank you to Homer for the $100 donation. Oh. What? Nice. Insane. Awesome. Folks, we have just hit 1401. We blew Whoa. past. Yay. We are elite and then some, my friends. <laughs> the kids. <laughs> think about the children. So much games and money and good times for kids who need it. <laughs> Thanks to you guys. We are, like... We are all, we're almost at $1,500. I wanted $500. We've almost tripled my goal. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. And Homer, because there is no shame and there is no judging in Bro Town, you can totally give yourself a wish, and I'm fine with that, my friend. Congratulations. Alex has his own wish coming when he shows up next three next session. So there you go. I want to be a real boy. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, yes, so Tordic tells you, Shannon, of his idea to, uh, enhance the ability, as it were, of the person who is winning. Or who will win, so you can predict that. If that's something you would like to go for. I'm, I'm down. Let's do uh, it. Alright, you get somebody making the wagers, I'll stay hidden over here and do what I gotta do. Okay, so we're going to say that as this goes on, um, we're going to have both Shannon and Tordek. I'm going to consider this carousing. <laughs> and I'm going to need you both to roll me percentile rolls. Adding your level to the roll. All right, and then Shannon. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to say in the course of this, the, the alcohol's flowing, the bets are going. You guys are racking up the cash. Uh, Tordek decides I'm going to jump in for one of the rounds just for the hell of it, just to see how he does. But again, he throws this, this ball and, you know, and he's playing... And, like, the bro on the other side of the table, he just doesn't like you. He just hates you. You would consider him an enemy. Like, he is just not having your shit, man. You just, you just rub him the wrong way. Similar to how a thief in the night rubbed an earlier blood hunter the wrong way. <laughs> However, Shannon, you realize that in all of this, you have made a profit to the degree of... Even though you've just purchased this tavern, uh, you basically know at the very minimum that all of the money you've made, you've pretty much already broke even on your expenditure for this tavern. Which is... I am the best businesswoman. So you ever. are. You haven't really gained any additional profit, but you've made back your initial investment <laughs> because of Tordex altering. Because War God's Blessing is a channel divinity, right? Yeah, I think it is. So every hour you can do two of them. So he's been working the tables for you for the past six hours. And you have just made back. Because these bros are drinking and they're betting. And they're just loose and fast and loose with their money. And yeah, you're back up. You've recovered the 45k that you spent on this bar. Oh, wow. This is I ridiculous. I don't know what I'm going to buy now. I, <laughs> I'm going to buy more stuff in Neverwinter. Hey, I get some of the profits also. You should just buy a bunch of stuff for really cheap using your charisma and then resell it for more than it's worth using your charisma. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you basically become... You can become the equivalent of, like, every HGTV show where they buy and sell and flip a house. Like, you're, like... You're the property brothers mixed with like everybody, like them. Fixer upper. Mixed with, yeah, basically every single show where they have somebody you can buy something and make it for more money the way that nobody, no normal person can do. You basically have that ability now. Because it took you 
literally six hours to both make enough money to buy a bar to then recoup all the money you spent on it. So really, anything you make from now on, you're in the black. Um, did Tordic make any money, or am I... Uh, it would come, um... Tordek, roll me to... Maybe roll me 46. Say 40? Nice. Uh, 4d6. You make 900 gold on this on the side, aside from her initial investment. You got 900 gold. I'm gonna give him, um, 15,000. <laughs> okay. That's pretty nice. <laughs> Shit. Um... I'll take it. <laughs> he came up with the idea, so I gotta give Holy him Holy shit, some... Benzheim, is that true? Guys, we're in the top nerd immersions. I'm in the top five of the whole Dungeons & Dragons team. <laughs> awesome. As far as donations for Extra Life. Number one being Wizards of the Coast. I want to throw that out there. <laughs> but we're in the top five. <laughs> All right. Amazing. Absolutely this is amazing. So cool. This is like... I don't know. I am like elated beyond all belief right now. This, this is insane. Um, I'm gonna go look at the teams real quick as we just determine to see what's going on. Um, the roster real quick, if I can find it. So is the guy that I'm playing against getting angry at me? Can I tell this? Yeah, you can tell this. I'm gonna let him win. All right, so top five. Wizards of the Coast, number one. Well, with $21,000. Lauren Bond, who is a very popular Twitch streamer who has got 7,500. Uh, 7, Andy Munich, who is, as I told you guys, who streamed last year and this year, he's the guy who runs the Irony Puppet. Like, that guy. He streamed as one of the official Dungeons & Dragons streamers. He was a Dungeon Master. He raised 2.1. And Chloe Monroe, who is another member of the Wizards of the Coast team, who's also playing and, and modding for their channel is number four, and we are number five. Like, <laughs> this is insane. And like, I jokingly messaged Wizards of the Coast before this started, and I was like, you guys inspired me, I'm gonna do this myself. We surpassed Greg Billsland, who was the guy who came up with the idea that Wizards of the Coast should do an extra life stream in the first place four years ago, and has ran it and managed it for them for the past three years. We're past him right now. This is insane. You guys have just <laughs> blown me away. Thank you so much to everyone. This is insane. Oh, and we still have 10 more hours. We still have 10 more hours, guys. This is insane. <laughs> Thank you so much to everybody. They, awesome. Like, just whoever thought that bros and gourds was going to get us where we are today. <laughs> it all started. It started with an egg. How did it end up like this? <laughs> It was only an egg. It was only an egg. I just... <sighs> Guys, I'm like... Aside from being slightly fried and also full on pizza, surge, and coffee, <laughs> just... I'm just so humbled, guys. This is amazing. You guys are all amazing. Thank you to everybody who's donated so far. Thank you to all the new follows to our channel. It's amazing. Um, it's just fantastic. Uh, apparently there was a thing that maybe happened. Lazy, I didn't see there. That Jal said. Uh, maybe I missed it. Did he donate to you directly? Uh, no, I didn't get an email. Uh, maybe. Thank you to my mom who just donated $15. <laughs> Thank you, Mom. Yeah, Ted's mom. Woo! This is amazing. It's just like, yeah, guys, yeah. this is 14, 16 right now we're at. Insane. Not that I want to get there, but if we broke 18, I would love to get there. If we do, we not we edge out one of the current Wizards of the Coast developments, their community manager. I think we just kick out and we're in the top four. <laughs> this is insane, oh you guys. Insane. I would like to point out that obviously this stream is important and this is the one we're doing. You guys can donate going forward after the stream ends to this. Obviously it won't affect the course of any of the stuff going forward, but if you do just want to donate to the kids, this will stay up for the remainder of 2016. This page will be here if you'd like to donate, just out of the goodness of your heart. Um, 
But yeah, I can only do one 24-hour extra live stream a year because I, I, I don't think I could handle this level of, ep of, of like epicness. It's just too much, too much to handle. Um, you gotta change the goal so that it's above the other person. Should we prices right it? One dollar above? <laughs> yes. <laughs> all right. <laughs> um, all right. So the guy, you let him win, and because I don't feel like fostering an enemy in a couple of hours when it won't really come to fruition. Um, I. You, uh, you, he, he's like, oh, good on you, bro. Thanks for, he like knows that you let him win, but he's cool with it. He's like, bro. I just grabbed him by the angle, bro. And he's like, yeah, you know, bro, you, you're, you're a cool, you're a chill bro. A real chill bro. I like that. Same to you, bro. Homies help homies, man. I get it. Let's go get some wine or whatever you want. So $1,811. Is going to be the new goal. We are prices writing Chloe Monroe. <laughs> I mean, again, just because we can, and this all goes to the kids. You guys are absolutely amazing. I love you all. Just like big hearts for everybody. So excited. 1811. We're going. What did I get for the $15? Because I can't read it and cheat. You can't read it. It's it's. I think it was directly to you, right? It's on yours. It, I think it's hidden. What it is? Uh, Jal, did you donate to me or to her directly, or whoever did the donation? I think it was to you directly because I'm not seeing it. The last one I got was was Homer's one, and then my mom's. Um. Hmm. I'll refresh. Yeah. Did you, Jal? I didn't. I didn't see it. Maybe it just didn't come through yet. Um, you said you donated eleven dollars. It's just not coming through, Joe. I'm not sure what happened. Um. Did you save your donation, by the way? Because sometimes, like, if you don't click confirm donation, it doesn't go all the way through. Um. I don't know why. I'm just checking. Yeah, I'm not seeing it right now, Jal. I don't want to hold up the the game, so we'll just have to handle that. Offline. I'm with. Yeah. It's not showing up here. I did not get an email for it either. I got that donation for making a really good pun. Did you? <laughs> yeah, I said that Gordon actually just harvested all the gourds that were left and opened up a really good restaurant, and now he's Gordon Ramsay. <laughs> Oh, laugh. It's hilarious. Oh, that was great. No, no, no. I'm not. I've. No, oh, great joke. I'm contemplating how I can work that into the story. <laughs> I'm going to buy that restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> um, I only. The only reason I'm contemplating this is because my main D&D &D campaign that happens on Tuesday that most of the players don't know is literally. Like, the main villains are most of the Food Network stars. Like, they just don't know that yet. <laughs> like, they found Alton Brown's spoon, which Alex has in this game as well. The spoon of good eats. Um, <laughs> Wait, why aren't I watching this? <laughs> uh, because, well, one of them is actually showing up. He's going to play in the 9 a.m. slot, because he's going to be here later. Um, okay, maybe I'll wake up early. So, right. Yeah. No, do your thing, Shannon. We're, we're just being stupid right now anyway, so do your thing. Uh, uh, we're good. Um, but yeah, no, they, uh, they're they going to have to eventually fight the Iron Chef, which is five members of the Food Network team that all have iron golems that form together like Voltron to make the Iron Chef. Uh, um, so that's a thing. They're going to have to track down uh, Gaius Fieri, the Fire Genazi, king of the local town of Flavortown in the south, they're gonna have to travel to the City of Charms to find the Bard of the College of Cakes, Duff Goldman, and travel to another plane to find Time Lord, uh, T-H-Y-M-E, Time Lord Alton Brown, to reunite them to fight against the evil Food Network. Um, this is amazing. I watch so much Food Network. <laughs> yeah, uh, clearly I do. So, it all started as a joke when I made a Flavortown joke as an actual <laughs> place, and then it turned into the entire campaign. But the thing is, they don't know any of that. 
<laughs> like they heard me make that joke and I made the Alton Brown joke. But I've I've constantly joked about the city of charms where, you know, cuz Duff Goldman works for Charm City Cakes. Mm -hmm. And nobody's picked up on it. They just think it's like a magical place where there's magical charms. They don't know. It's great. I'm, I'm gonna watch it and I'm gonna blow up that chat. You don't even know. Uh, uh, I have so many people. They're like, "How can you do this?" I'm like contemplating making like a Guy Fieri like mini like for when they show up, and it's all because of the mat. We're getting distracted, but off top, it's all because of the flavor. They've been told to beware the flavor. It's a magic <laughs> spice. I have to find out what it does. I know. You guys can find out on Tuesday night. Um, so, you guys are rich now, beyond most of your wildest dreams for most of your characters. Scarlet has broed out with the broiest of bros, got the sweetest, sickest bro armor. Ash has quite possibly one of the coolest things ever, a baby dragon that is bonded to her, thanks to a strange, slippery old man's wish in the night that brought her together with her dragon and has bound them permanently, telepathically, forevermore. And you have been speaking with Rogar, who has been telling you that maybe, or, or Rugarth, rather, you should head to a library here in Neverwinter to possibly find information on the ancient Gordic cult. What time is it now? Uh, let's say it's like it's like 9 p.m. You guys have been brown out for a while. All right, so the library wouldn't be open. You don't know. Neverwinter is like, it's a, it's a city, like it's, it's, this is a large city, you've never, the biggest you've ever been in, things could be open late here. Okay, then I'm going to walk up to the bartender and ask him, where's the library and is it open? Uh, he goes, yeah, it's open late, and you're not going to find a lot of people there, there's probably one or two librarians there late, but for the most part... Maybe that's better for if you're reading, I guess. I don't really do that. Um, so you can uh, go ahead and head over there. It's, it just kind of like tells you like some rough street directions on how to get there because it's pretty big. Um, I hope you you have some time to spare because uh, there's a lot of books there. So. All right. Do Thank I you. Hear about the library? Yeah, you overheard about the library. There it is. Uh. You got a touch of luck and a feeling inspired. So you have a reroll of a natural one and an instance of inspiration. Scarlet. From Jal. So thank you very much, Jal, for that your donation yet again. Um, all right. So yes, you over here uh, as Ash heads out with Evie to the library. Uh, Shannon, would you like to accompany her? Yeah, I'm going to follow up because I heard library and I love libraries. Plus... My background feature has to do with libraries, so... There you go. Uh, I'm gonna assume that Tordek and Scarlet just continue growing out with the literal... It's like, if, if Faerun had frat parties, that's what this is like. Oh, there, I'm are, gonna make a... there are cask stands happening right now. Like, things are getting make a quick trip, crazy. Though. What's up? I'm making a quick trip. Yeah? If there's a temple of Torm in town. Absolutely. Well, I make my way there. Okay. You make your way there. <laughs> as best as I can. It takes a little while, considering you're That's fairly new to the city, but... Perfectly you make, fine. You make your way there. So All right. You're at, well, just because we'll just, we're here. You're at the Temple of Torm. Just hit a door. Hello, anybody there? Uh, you know, the door kind of opens and you can head right. All right. I walk in. Yep. Hello? Uh, there's a, a guy in the back that kind of is like, you know, it, it's at this point, by the time you actually get there, it's like 11 o'clock, because you, you feel like it only took you five minutes, but it actually took you an hour. That's fine. Um, as you're like wandering around like, bro, <laughs> dorm, bro, bro, and they're Maybe like, a couple what? times. <laughs> what? Before you finally get somebody that's like, oh, oh, dorm, yeah, it's over there, and you finally figure out where you're going. Um, so yeah, and he comes out and he's like, yes. Uh, sorry to disturb you, bro. I got a donation, though, to make of 8,350. It's for the bro kids. He goes, this is, this is quite pleasing to me. He goes, please. It has to go to the bro kids, though. He goes, 
Of course. To the Brokens. And he, like, takes you to, a, like, there's a coffer box. There's a coffer box that says, like, bros, and the one next to it that says bro kids. <laughs> All right. <laughs> and he goes, this is... This is quite some some gift you are giving. It's a pleasure. You, I put it eight eight thousand there. Noyo Torm would be quite pleased. And he kinda like puts his hand out for like a bro test. And he's just like this overly hairy dude, looks like a bear. Just like stereotypical crazy buffed out hairy Russian dude. Just like Right on man. Right on bro. <laughs> you guys bro fist and he's like Torm could be with you and he goes and he goes back to bed you too I leave and go back to the bar alright um, <laughs> you know what I'm gonna give you an instance of inspiration in the traditional sense of the word because of you playing up to your background so congratulations you have an instance of inspiration alright um, so... inspire myself to drink more <laughs> <laughs> congratulations it worked <laughs> Yes! And Scarlet, you are just like, you are literally in heaven right now. It is just bros drinking, just being bros. Like, bros before hoes. Woo! Yeah, like people are hanging out, they're getting drunk, people are getting into like broly bare knuckle boxing just for fun. Like, it's just like, it is just a rowdy, raucous thing. And you can kind of, uh, you don't think this, but other people could think maybe. This is why that bartender had no problem selling it if this kind of stuff happens in his bar all the time. Just a bunch of dudes sloshing beer. The floors are constantly sticky. Like, your boots are constantly sticking to the floors because of just the spill, like, bro, and the two mugs click together and, like, the beer just falls over onto the ground and people are like, ah, bro, and they like, just keep going at it. And the there's, like, blood on the floor because people are like, you know, the occasional fist fight just breaks out. Like, the rowdiest Old West saloon but if it was frat, like frat boys, like that's what you're thinking. Like, think, picture that right now. Like, it's insane in here. Um, oh my god, this is amazing. <laughs> can I find out what my donation is now? Uh, I, I have an hour. Did I not tell you? No, unless I wasn't paying attention. I did. Uh, oh, I wasn't. Paying you have an instance of inspiration and a reroll of a natural one. Great. So there you go. Um, so, uh, you guys make your way to the library, uh, and while at the library, um, I need you both to make uh, history checks. Let's say. Shannon, for some reason... Could it reason, be religion? Sure, it could be religion. Well, what are you looking for specifically? I thought there was uh, something about, like, the... Oh, I didn't know if you were looking for that. Uh, so, like, yeah, let's have you either make a history or a religion check, whichever you prefer. Uh, well, we're both the same, so it doesn't matter. All right. 17? 17. Um, yeah, Shannon, you... Um, I wasn't sure if you're looking for anything in particular because you are a a library type person. If you were like, I'm gonna go there, but I'm also gonna look for things for me because it seems no, to I was be just gonna, mo. I'm gonna I was gonna help out because I get um, people who uh, at libraries will like help me out because okay. of the high so you start looking in like a history section, and one of the librarians comes up and they kind of recognize you as a scholarly type. And say, no, 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 you're gonna wanna look, and they point you more towards the cults and the religions section of the library. Um, and you guys start working your way over there. And between your efforts combined, you like, in the back, back, like, annals of this library, you find this old, old, dusty tome that probably hasn't been opened in you don't even know how long. And it's, it's big. It's, like, yay big and, like, yay wide. It's a big book. So it's, like, it's actually too heavy for Shannon to carry it. It's, like, the size of her almost. So Ash has to carry it as you move towards the desk to view it. Uh, and you poof, drop it on the table. And the, poof, the dust cascades off as you... The book creaks for some reason, like a door. I don't know. I'm tired. 
So let's say that happens. Also, I think I have a library music track. I'm gonna see if I have that. <laughs> because why not? Um, we have like a wizard library or something. That's towns, past medieval library. Boom. There's some pages turning, I heard that. Shh. Shh. That's it. I have to like listen. Uh, so, you guys are looking through the book. And, uh, it is got cults of all sorts of weird things. Uh, gods you've never heard of. Uh, there are all sorts of. There's a lot of stuff on the cult of the dragon, uh, the cult that wanted to raise Tiamat. It kind of details their whole history about how. Initially, they thought the reason to free the way to free Tiamat was to create Draco liches, which, as you think about it, makes absolutely no sense. How are you going to free the queen of all evil dragons from the nine hells by making undead dragons? Literally makes no sense. You realize why it probably took them six thousand or six hundred years of failing before they finally figured out that you need to try to summon her, not make undead dragons. Really stupid people. Um. <laughs> Realistically, though, that's the actual storyline. I don't want that, 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 that. Just think about that for a second. How stupid that sounds. Um, eventually, you do find written in Sylvan, for those of you who speak it. I don't know who does. Uh, I, think I Light, do. I know Light does. Do you, Shannon? Uh, is a very. It's almost. It's extremely faded and hard to read. Is just the word Gord written. And then there's a series of text below it. And it basically dictates to you that there once millennia before, before most, in the, you know, after the time of giants and dragons, but before the time of most of these civilized races walked the world, and the world was, and the realms were mostly that of nature and natural beings. Beasts and ancient creatures roamed the lands, creatures of, of odd shapes and size, and everything, you know, things were larger, like, Bears and deer were huge size. We're talking like 15, 20 feet tall. Crazy stuff. There were plants that grew in strange sizes. These gourds that grew to epic proportions. Um, and to the point where some of these gourds would eventually become sentient. And uh, they kind of kept to the shadows, staying in their patches where things could be, where they could be safe. You know, just primarily warding off, uh, you know, animals and things from eating them as time went on. And centuries passed, and eventually these small folk and the other races came to the, the realms. And uh, about 1,500 years ago, after all of the humans and established elves and dwarves come up from the earth and all blah, 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 everybody's lore comes into play. Um, one gourd was grown. And this gourd, this sentient gourd, in an area where violet shriekers and fungus and treants and things exist, so sentient magical plants are a thing, one gourd grew that some would call a gourd to rule them all. This gourd had, had most gourds were just happy living in their gourdic patches, having a good time. Um, no care in the world. This Gord, though, this Gord had ambitions. This Gord was going to rally all the other Gords to him, and they were going to take back the realms from all of the other folk who have destroyed the nature around and corrupted this area, and some of them crush Gords to make pies and eat them, and they have just the audacity of people. This Gord was a pumpkin. Some call him a pumpkin king. Others refer to him as a great pumpkin. And he rose from his pumpkin patch on All Hallows' Eve. Um, however, one, there was one legendary adventurer who knew that such a pumpkin would rise, and no one believed him. But he summoned forth all of his arcane energy to seal this great pumpkin king away in another realm. 
and stop his return. Hopefully forever. It appears, however, that Linus, the great wizard, was not able to seal away all of the great pumpkin's magic. He apparently was able to live on as a spirit, traveling through the world, latching on as he could to weaker creatures to corrupt their minds and distort them, to control them and live through them. And that's the way things have been for centuries. Seemingly, uh, nothing has happened or been heard of since. And that's the last you have on the Great Pumpkin, the king of all gourds. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Whoever thought that Charlie Brown would show up in a D&D campaign... Well, not, not Charlie Brown. Linus, the true hero of the story. Uh, of course. <laughs> the only one who believed that there was such a creature. What has my life turned into? I don't even know anymore. Oh, this is so good. I'm, I'm not even there learning this, and I'm just like, this is amazing. <laughs> and uh, I'm going to say Ash fills Shannon in on all of this information. Yes, I give her all the information... Well, that was a story. Yeah, um, so are we, like, fighting this dude, or, we, like, what happens now? That's a good question, I mean... I don't know... Well, apparently, you know, him being... Or crying, or... Yeah, being... Yeah. On lesser people, and the old man. Well, we all know what he was using him for. I, I, I just, mm. he's somewhere out there. Indeed, he is. I really wish the extra life tabletop weekend was like a month from now. It would be even better. You know, it is what it is. Uh, yeah. So you find this. You find all of this information. And it is unsettling, at the least. You've never heard of anything like this. This this magic, this pumpkin king. Just strange, strange things to hear. Uh, why don't you both make me... You, you both met him. Both make me an insight check. Team. Uh, 25. 25. Okay, so between the two of you, you kind of put together... That um, obviously, yes, this this if this is indeed what has happened, it had preyed upon poor Gordon. Perhaps it was drawn to his name. Perhaps it was drawn to his love of gourds. Perhaps the fact that he was blind and weak. Um, however, uh, for a little exposition here, because I don't know if it's ever going to come up again. Uh, but basically, uh, the process of this pumpkin joining to Gordon. Um, is it actually what caused him to go blind um, unexpectedly and basically the pumpkin was just pissed because he was trapped in a weak blind man who had no ambition except to stay at a roadside sand and sell gourds so for 10 years the trying to further his agenda he was just stuck at a roadside stand doing nothing uh, until he found some poor, loyal ad adventurers who decided they wanted to help him, and he saw his moment, so he latched on as best he could, and uh, has been freed by druidic magic. And uh, I just kind of so almost like slump, <laughs> kind of like you know, this is my fault. Shannon just looks awkward because she doesn't know <laughs> how to comfort people. <laughs> um, eh, mm, there, there. Mm, yes, pat on the head. <laughs> like, but really, it's the knee because she's so tall compared to you. Um, yeah, uh, light. This is this is a rough realization. Um, 
But sometimes bad things happen to good people. But you found you you know your ultimate goal was to find this dragon egg, and you did. You really did. I did. You saved the world from giants corrupting a extremely rare emerald dragon, and now she is permanently bonded to you forever. But it just so appears that an evil deity has been summoned into the world inadvertently through a corruption of druidic magic and a latching on to a poor defenseless old man. So, what do you do? I look at Shannon. Well, to be honest, I could just go home with with Evie, because that's all I wanted. You could, but, but there's this guy out there now. Also, yes. I will throw it out there that it is a that's corruption of nature and will upset the balance, which is a group you completely stood with who helped you find your dragon. Yes. So. But also, if this Pumpkin King wants to uh, basically just roll and twisting the nature out there, I have to go and find him. I hope yeah. Sounds interesting. Maybe I can get some more stuff. Uh, yeah, Shannon, really this, as, as a researcher and someone who loves knowledge and books and things like that, you recognize two things. One, this is your chance if you want to be the person, I mean, you could basically, because you run in library circles, call yourself as the sole discoverer of this information if you so choose, and credit your friends or not. But one, you want to talk about publications. This is like, you will be talked about forever. Like, this is a legendary opportunity to become a renowned uh, person for the Discover. Like, you will be in every journal publication that exists in the realms, having had discovered this uh, this creature. Um, yeah, there are definitely stars in her eyes. She's like, oh, I could do so much. Yeah. Everybody will know my name. Yes, that is... I forget what the second thing was, but I think I bastardized the first and second thing together. So basically, yes... This would make you renowned, and your name will be written in history books forever. Also, this is a chance, this was what it was, to study and learn about this magic, a type of magic that has not been seen in centuries. So. All of that sounds good, though. She's <laughs> going to be like, to um, Ash, she's going to be like, yeah, we totally need to find this, and we need to, we need to study it, and we need to either help that old man or, or destroy everything. If he's beyond help, help. Uh, but we're gonna do it. We're gonna do it <laughs> together. And she like puts in her hand. Tiny little Sounds apple good. hand goes in. <laughs> I put it on top. And you like put your hand on top, and the librarian's like, Shh. <laughs> even though there's nobody in the library except you two, <laughs> just a, just a reflex. And he's like, I'm sorry, reflex. It's, it's okay. Goes back to his books, like. So you guys have that knowledge. It's now like 11.30 at night. What do you guys do? Um, well, I'll get up and ask Shannon maybe we should find a place to, to... And maybe find a guy or a gal that can um, scry for us. Um, find him. If you want, uh, the gentleman there has a, uh, a notebook with him, and he tells you that the librarian kind of says, I, if there was any information, you could obviously check out this book, but if you plan, and he kind of looks you guys up and down and goes, if you plan to adventure, I'm afraid I cannot allow that. The, the book cannot leave the city, but I do have this, and he has a notebook, and he says, this is a notebook of dictation, it will, if you require or wish, I will let you use this for a small fee uh, to allow you to 
Whatever you say or read will be automatically magically dictated on these sheets, which you can take with you as far as notes and things go. Oh, well, thank you. Small fee is like 25. A day? Uh, no, just it's a one-time use because it's just gonna like you read what it writes and it's like a quick quotes quill from Harry Potter But it actually writes everything down as you read it out loud or and, and then he'll just like rip the pages out of the book and give it to you Oh, okay, so we can like really quickly read everything. Yeah, read basically. Well, and Ash will have to read it because she's the only one who can But you can read it all yeah. again and it'll copy it down for you. 25 gold. Okay. Give him the 25 gold because I'm actually immobile from the amount of gold that I have right now. <laughs> yeah, really, like, Jericho is, like, belly almost on the ground as he's walking because of just the sheer weight of you with all of this gold. Um, so, you, uh, you copy it all down and obviously you head back to the bar. Yeah, Jericho's getting so buff right now. Two, he's getting swole because of just carrying the weight. Like, like it's a bro dog right now. A bro stick. Bro! The dog bro comes stick. walking back in and like the dog's like puffed out like like pit bull chest on a mastiff, like or like bulldog chest more, I guess I should say, and he's just like the dog nods at you as you say bro. <laughs> and it goes woof like it's broing back at you. So he's uh you can tell he's picking up some cues from the group. Um, oh jeez! So <laughs> he was already hard enough to control, <laughs> and now he's becoming a bro. Um, <laughs> it's infectious. It's a disease. Oh god! Yes. So you make your way back, and uh, you have your information, and you see your companions. Are there rooms at the tavern that I bought? There are. Go figure. Upstairs, there are eight Tell rooms. Me know what you bought. And I give each one of my companions a room for free. It's on the house. There you go, guys. You each awesome. Have a room. Oh, by the Thank way, you. like the bar, it's just like there's a there's like a serious pile of gold behind the bar, but the bar itself, like the area, it's just a mess. It's just like spilled beer, tipped over mugs, like peanut shells and shit on the floor. <laughs> like it's just a disaster. I'm gonna see about hiring some more help because obviously this has gotten out of control. <laughs> like. It's, it's after a frat party, but you're the Maybe one. Maybe some owns bouncers. The house. Like, so it's just like, like if there were beer cans, there would be so many beer cans. But instead, it's just tipped over mugs and spilt beer, and just beer food everywhere. And like, there's a couple of passed out dudes in like piles of like puddles of vomit and shit. It's just a disaster. Um, but yeah, you made a butt ton of money, so. <laughs> I'm gonna press the dig digitation, the shit, out of this place. It takes you probably a half an hour, but you end up cleaning everything up. Um, and it, it, you know, and it can smell like whatever you want, because it's pressed the digitation. Uh, it's gonna smell like cinnamon. Okay. Thematic. Uh, at the place, whole place smells like cinnamon. Uh, but not, like, overpowering, it's just, like, it's a nice, light cinnamon scent. Uh, and it's completely clean. Magically clean. As some would say, because that's what happened. Um, and yeah, you just have like a fat stack of coins behind the counter. Uh, like, I mean, again, they are only paying for ale, but it all totals out to like, like 300 gold. And this is just for people buying drinks, and the drinks are like a couple of copper pieces each, because these bros went ham. Like, major party. Yeah. Like, Kegs were tapped. Yes, yes, casks are empty. Um, I might have to do a con save. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Get you to do hey. a constitution saving throw. Guess I should do it also. Uh, yes. Oh. Oh, Forget man. about it. I've been drinking like the whole entire day. <laughs> so the way I where I deal with drinking is you can drink. Obviously, this doesn't apply because you guys have been rage drinking all night. <laughs> but um, you get. One, one drink per constitution modifier before anything even starts to affect you. So you have that in your effect. As a dwarf with resistance, you'd add one to your constitution modifier overall for that. But after that, we're going to say that was a cumulative set of rolls for all of the drinks. Each Technically, each drink after that, you'd have to make a con save each time after your initial group. If, and then if you start failing, you start going through levels of drunk. Um, 
Eric, I'm gonna need you to roll me a d6. I'm completely fine with this. Five. So, there are six stages of drunk in my universe. You are at the fifth stage. <laughs> that is Drinking falling all day, down straight. drunk. You have, let's see, disadvantage if this comes up tonight, which it probably won't. Disadvantage on all attacks, saves, ability checks. You uh, can you can basically ignore up to two levels of exhaustion because you're just powered through and you're so drunk. You have mm -hmm. advantage on all charisma saves because you think you're amazing. <laughs> but you have disadvantage on any intelligence, dex, or wisdom saving throws. Like that. Um, and uh, you, your weapon is on the ground, just you don't know where it is. Um, it requires you a dex save to move at all without falling over, and you, for, you have total memory loss of everything that happened tonight. You're just going to wake up in your bed with a butt ton of gold and no memory of <laughs> the past six hours. You're just so hammered. And you'll need to make a constitution saving throw in the morning or be hungover. Okay. Uh, but Scarlet is just a fucking bro. She's like, whatever. She ordered a pizza because that exists all of a sudden. And it was like a Domino's or Pizza Hut pizza. So it just absorbs the alcohol 100%. And like, you are ready to hit the gym first thing in the morning. Like, oh, man. Gym tan laundry. <laughs> yeah, you know. You know, bro. You know. Uh, GTL, man. Uh, so, uh, yeah, you guys all make your way to, to your, your rooms. Uh, Rugarth has already gone to bed. Um, and, yeah. I probably didn't make it up there. No, you are passed out on the oh, stairs, yeah. actually. Like, That's halfway fine. up the stairs, like, half of your armor, like, taken off as you're walking. Like, it's a trail from where you started. <laughs> there's your weapon, there's a greave, there's a pauldron, there's a gauntlet, there's half of your plate, the other half of your plate, and you're, like, up the stairs, and there's, like, a mug two steps up that's, like, <laughs> dripping onto your nose, but you're asleep. Like, Can I use my stairs. shoes as, like, a pillow? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Alright. Um, and, like, also, in a similar fashion, all of the party bros are also... So Tyr, Bob, and Brodian are all just, like, rode out drunk together in, like, a group cuddle. They're all, like, swooning each other. It's bro adorable. Um, <laughs> so. Um, and then you, uh, you guys all go to sleep. Um, because why not? Uh, and then, during the night, though, Ash, you start having these these nightmares, these visions of fire and flashes of orange and and people screaming and writhing vines traversing through things and just like grabbing people and pulling them down below the surface screaming as their throats are filled up with soil as they're pulled below the ground and then the vision goes completely black and there is basically just this evil sinister looking like jack-o'-lantern face and you wake up I wake. Uh, I, I I'm. I'm in the panic. You did say something about your character having like horrible yeah. dreams of things that do come. It's one of your background features. So. Yeah. Uh, congratulations! It's like coming hey. to pass. <laughs> um, so you wake up, Shannon. You have just. At this point, you're having. You had like a rough night with all the shit that went down in the library. But like, you wake up and you're like, I'm so fucking rich. My life is fantastic. Um, Scarlet, you get up, and again, yeah, it would be like if this was a, if GTL is a thing you did, you're like ready to bro out and hit it up again. Brodian's holding my feet while I just keep doing sit ups, like a yeah. bazillion of them. Yeah, you're just like you're you you pretty much are. You got like a little bit of a hangover, like a little bit of a headache, and you just sweat it out with sit ups. Like push through, push yeah, through. That's how you do it. Um, and then. Tordek, I'm gonna need you to make a constitution saving throw. At advantage, because you're a dwarf. A 23. No, so, oops. you're fine. Um, you... You wake up. You do... You are going to, I will can say, for the next... Uh, 2d4. Roll me a 2d4. Uh, for the next two hours, you will basically have sunlight sensitivity. 
because right. just the bright light is just too much for your hungover head to deal with. So, so I get up and just kind of like start rubbing my eyes and goes, oh, that shit happened last night. Uh, you're and then I cast yeah, yeah. Greater Restoration on myself. Uh, two. All right, so you are... <laughs> uh, <laughs> sure, you remember everything that happened now because it removes memory loss. Uh, your eight, your intelligence is restored to its natural eleven, whatever it was prior, I think and it your was hangover that. is cured. <laughs> oh, I'm feeling good now. Yes. All right. So you head downstairs. I grab my you things. You see, like Tear and and Bob are still kind of like spooning, and like a deep snore, but Brodian is just like hanging out, like he's holding Scarlet's <laughs> legs on the bar as she's inverted sit upping off the other side of the bar just like just like not like not even really like she's sweating a little bit but like you don't know how long she's been doing this you've been doing this for like 15 minutes and you're just fine you're just like whatever bro got to get those gains you know just working out on doing those inverted <laughs> she's, sit ups she's just going to see him enter and just be like bro yeah she's doing that like while sitting up like doing inverted sit ups <laughs> Because you got the realization when you fell over your horse the first time that this works your at your front abs and your back abs. This is a fantastic workout. Why is everybody doing this? You just have like invented a whole new workout routine. The new P90X. Well, uh, actually, the original this is P90X. the only P90X. Bro 90X. Yes. The yeah, bro, bro 90X. 90X. <laughs> it's just bro 90 minutes a day. <laughs> Or in just bro 90 days, I guess, technically. But yeah, you are... You're just getting so swole. Completely. You don't even I... know how swole I can get, bro. Actually, I, want... I do. And even though your belt of storm gi or fire giant strength sets your, ace your strength at a 25, it is now a 26. So you bump up and your strength goes up one level because of your swole training with your bros. Invented. And I'm not even going to get to hit anything, probably. <laughs> I'm going to throw something in here in the next half an hour so you can hit something. Yes! Spoiler alert. <laughs> so while she's doing that, I walk by Naughty Man and go, Bros, and I get yeah. some coffee or something. Yeah, um, the guy behind the bar, the bartender there, he, he's made fresh coffee because he knows. He's worked in this bar, he owned this bar before, he knows how this goes. But normally he doesn't have a magician to clean up all the mad uh, the mess, so he has to do it with the mop. So his day, he's kind of having a great day right now. Right. <laughs> I thought Scar I thought that Shannon was gonna wake everyone up and be like, "You don't pay, you can't stay. Get to work." <laughs> <laughs> it's not that awful. <laughs> so you um you all end up making your way down the stairs. Uh, Ash looks like visibly shaken. Like, something looks off about her. Um, rested, but, like, it seems like there are dark circles under her eyes. So everybody did get a long rest and all the stuff that's associated with that. But you do look, she does look haggard, even though she did just sleep for eight hours. Um, Alright, y'all right there? Did you get a little too crunk last night? <laughs> I, I smile and... No, I I had a a vision. Smoke and fire and people being pulled into the ground. And then this this face of a pumpkin. And I woke up. Did you, uh, do something else other than drink last night? A uh, pumpkin? <laughs> no, no. Um, Chan and I found some information. And, uh, and I'll go ahead and tell them the whole story. Uh, Rugarth will say is there as well, listening to this. He yeah. seems quite uh, unnerved by all of this as well. So you guys get the whole story about the great pumpkin, the ancient wizard Linus. power of this once legendary cord. How t nobody cares. Everybody's just super chill about it. <laughs> I was saying goodnight. Um, yeah, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, uh, 
Scarlet will uh, get up from her P90X workout. And. Band bending. Yeah, band bending. <laughs> <laughs> and she's just gonna be like, well, shit. I mean, do we know anybody in town who can give us a good scry and point us in the right direction? We can't just ignore something that's killing, well, potentially killing a bunch of people. Um, we can try to find somebody. I heard that there should be somebody here that I was going to find Evie here. Um, yeah, you guys don't, you haven't really looked, but you could try to track down some sort of caster to get you some kind of idea. Some sort of scry or something similar. Guys, thank you for the follow. You guys are awesome. Um, th thank you, Tier. Thank you again. The bros will live on uh, in your name, at least till noon tomorrow. <laughs> um, so, uh, you guys can attempt to track down that person if you want. I'll say it happens relatively quickly. Thank you, Eric, for the host. <laughs> a little bit late in the game, but thank you for the host. Uh, uh, what are you talking about? Still nine and a half hours. Yeah, I know. Better late than never. That's exactly <laughs> true. So, you guys track down... Screw it. Because I haven't done this voice tonight, and I can't get by doing a Neverwinter encounter without doing this voice. So, oh boy. Yeah, you know what's coming late. <laughs> you know what's coming. I do. You guys find uh, a kooky character, this eccentric wizard, who tells you as you walk in to find, uh, you see, you, you, you hear his name and you make it there. And uh, you walk inside to this just weird tchotchkes on the wall and there's this, uh, this wizard there, kind of standing, facing his back, facing you as he's looking at something on his shelf. Excuse me. He turns around and he looks at you. And he goes, "Hello, what can I do for you?" <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, I'm actually looking for somebody. To help me scry. Scry, I'm your guy. <laughs> Pleased to meet you. <laughs> says, um, my name, they call me, they like Clyde. I will find whatever you need. Perfect. <laughs> 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 Um, my name is Ash, and I'm looking for a person or a pumpkin Those or gourd. Different things. <laughs> I'm gonna pull out one of the gourds that I bought from the guy, and be like, "I bought a gourd from this guy that we're looking for. Would you be able to find him through this?" A gourd. Wonderful. And he takes the gourd from you and he looks at it and he goes, Gourd. And he's like, puts it down on the table and starts casting some magic around it. Um, so he says, uh, Well, gourd. No, if you know. Also, pumpkin is a gourd. Let's see what we got. And he starts casting some magic and, and scrawling some runes down on a piece of paper. Uh, and, you know, you, you see the, the gourd kind of lift up and it's moving around as he's chanting out various words. And it's all in some sort of arcane gobbledygook nonsense that Shannon, you pick up most of what he's saying. But he pauses so often in this, you can't tell if the incantation is done or not. Because when you have a conversation with him, he's just like talking and then there's a pause 
Is he done? Don't know. Uh, and this goes on for like a half an hour, he's doing this scry. And you realize that a normal person could do this in probably like a minute, but just the pausing takes so long that the casting just takes arguably 30 times longer. And he eventually completes the scry. And he only, he shows you kind of what he sees through some of his, his arcane magical ability. And he only gets brief glimpses. It's almost as if there's some sort of interference trying to prevent um, the location. Like there's possibly some sort of protection there. Uh, so he's stopping, you know, he's actively blocking divination magic, it seems. Um, but he gets images of pumpkins and, and vines and patches and things like that. Uh, and like a very s a quick flash of an image of a small town and then a bridge, covered bridge that leads into this town. And then again, you see very briefly the farmhouse where that you saw in Phandalin with that decrepit um, old uh, farm out front. But there are th there are vines wreathing, writhing is the correct term, the way you pronounce it, uh, through the ground and causing, and there are pumpkins sprouting at a supernatural rate, and there are what look like active sentient scarecrows walking around tending to these pumpkins. And that's all you get before the, the cry ends. You never actually see him. You have just that little bit of information. He might be actively deceiving you, pushing you somewhere else, or the, the, you kind of get like up to kind of where he is. You saw the farmhouse, but that's about it. Okay. He goes, wow, crazy, crazy stuff. Pumpkin. Wow. <laughs> Just ignore me for this entire thing. <laughs> I can't talk right now. Uh, for those of you who are curious about my walk-in, there's a character in my Tuesday night game, Edrasad, the dragon shaman, who loves dragons. Uh, and because I made that voice, my PCs go to him for everything, so that I always have to do that. Um, even if it's not related to dragons or anything else, they always go talk to him every chance they get, because then I have to do that voice. Uh, so, if you like Christopher Walken, uh, you can show up on Tuesday nights, and chances are I'm gonna end up doing that voice at some point. Also... The more tired and weird I get as things go on in Dungeons & Dragons, I start going into that voice kind of by accident. It's weird. I live in upstate New York. I don't have any kind of New York City <laughs> accent. But you know, when you know, you know? Uh, so anyway, that's the information you get from the scry. I'm sorry. I've been awake for all this time working on this, or not at all, and it's kind of making me insane, so. <laughs> Do you need any more coffee? <laughs> No, no, I'm actually wide awake. I'm just... Like, I actively did a walk-in. That's not a thing that normally happens. That's usually a request of me. But this is, like, I did this on my own. I did this do to you, myself. Do you need a Jaeger bomb? <laughs> Jaeger bomb? No. I don't want to get crazy. Just checking. Got a pumpkin. No. Crazy. Pumpkin. I tell him that he can keep the gourd. Gourd? <laughs> you! I like you. Which gourd? Yeah. Well, thank you. Thank you for helping us and showing us. Yes. Of course. I. Bide. Legendary. Wizard. Binds. Guys. For you. And you, and you, and even you. And he points at the uh, at the dog because <laughs> he's <laughs> insane. Um, and he goes, "You need to find anything, you know. I'm right here all the time." Um, by any chance, did you see or recognize the small town?
Nope. Never heard of it. <laughs> it's a weird town. Be careful at sure vines and, and scarecrows and stuff. Pumpkin. Yeah, everybody, everybody saw it, right? Yeah, everybody, everybody saw it. We'll say everybody saw it. He's a very powerful wizard. Can we all roll? Um, sure. We'll see. Um, your guys is a. Uh, knowledge of, of other areas is probably fairly limited. Um, this is a very... You got you don't have a lot to go on, but everybody can make me uh, we'll say history checks, I guess. Team. <laughs> Alright. Uh, well, let's see what else everybody can get, because why not? Uh, we're gonna wait on... We're waiting on uh, our dwarf here. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't remember shit. Uh, <laughs> he had a rough night. <laughs> Scarlet, I did. You, you are just like so broad. You feel so swole after all of your sit-ups, and like you just kind of like flex a little bit, like vol like involuntarily. It's just a thing that happens to you now. And as you like, you kind of crack your neck a little bit, like you kind of just hit that perfect nerve in your neck. That's just that satisfying crack. That's perfect. And it goes all the way up into your brain. And it triggers a synapse in your head that you're like, holy shit, I think I know where that is. This is so bizarre. How do I know this? And you know it's in a town, a sleepy little town, in a hollow not too far away. The town of Sleepy Hollow that's on the eastern side. Um, <laughs> it's several, several days' ride from here. Um... No one ever goes there. It's a sleepy little town. But uh, you know where it is. You have an idea, at least, of where to, how to get there. She's just going to reach out on both sides and just grasp the arm of whoever is next to her and be like, Bros, Sleepy Hollow, let me draw you a map before I leave. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, that astute you, bro, as you say. Great. Also, good. <laughs> she is going to, if she ends up staying here, she's going to hang out with this guy all the time. <laughs> um, all right. So we're going to say that you guys get the information. Scarlet draws you a map, and you guys begin to head out towards the town of Sleepy Hollow. Um... At night, in the in the evening, you guys are traveling down the road. And you hear a thing. Once I find what I'm looking for, which should hopefully be nope, I didn't find it at all. Um, let me check my my notes here real quick, and then I will tell you because I want I want Scarlet to hit something so bad. So we're gonna put something in here. I really want you to do this stream again next year, and then for me to just be looking at my sheet and be like, where did I get that extra strength point from? <laughs> oh yeah, I was just so swole. Yep, the swollest of the swole. You hear, as you're walking down the road, we need, I need creepy music. Let's see if I can find creepy music real quick. Uh, do we have a horror? We do have a horror section. <laughs> Chasan did not hear or heard something else. Well, you can hear whatever you want. <laughs> because reasons. So. I'm gonna lower that one and then put this one on. So you guys are traveling down the road in the evening. Uh, it gets dark, almost unnaturally dark, as you hear k -k -k -k, hoof prints traveling down the road. And uh, you turn and you see a horse with a rider on its back traveling down the road at high speed. The eyes of this horse almost ignited as if flames as it approaches you. 
And <coughs> you see, let me see, is this, uh, well, we'll just leave this one to be this because it is what it is. And I'm going to need you all to make perception checks. Shannon, they were on such a roll. Look at you. <laughs> That's pretty terrible. Uh, you guys 20. notice uh, the head of this rider. The eyes on him are also glowing, uh, as if by flames. And as he approaches 100 feet, 60 feet, 30 feet away, galloping at full speed. You notice as he's doing this, his right hand reaches up and unseats his head from his shoulders. And I'm gonna need everybody to roll for initiative. So as that happening, I just kind of yell out, oh, what the shite? That's just not right. What the rhymes? <laughs> I'm... <laughs> do I, do I, can I, uh, of before battle starts, to dismount my bro? Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I got a 16. Can I say when I saw the guy coming that I cast mage armor on myself? No. Absolutely. Um, Did you see him coming? Do you even know he's there right now? <laughs> well, yeah, actually, you didn't One. see him coming. You were like, what? Um, but you're pretty high <laughs> in the initiative order, so chances are. <laughs> Did you clear the turn order? Because I stopped 21. Uh, what was your turn? What did you roll? I rolled two. I two. <laughs> I changed it. Okay, great. Uh, we need... Oh, so that's... Oh, Amy's not here. We'll take her out. And we'll add in this dude. He has to roll. D20. Three. So he's got a six. So first up is Shannon. You look up and you see, holy shit, as this guy is riding down, what do you do? So you didn't have time to cast Mage Armor because you didn't notice him before. Oh well, um, so I'm like, oh shit, and I cast uh, Haste and I twin it for uh, Scarlet and I'll put it on Tordak. Okay. I'm so gonna rip it up. You guys are both hasted right now. Alright. <clears throat> Go ahead, Scarlet. It's your turn. Okay, I'm gonna run up and I'm gonna just try to axe up the horse's legs uh, so that he can fall off. Um, also, I'm gonna use menacing attack with one of my superiority dice. Okay. Uh... <laughs> okay. Shannon runs away as much as she can. An 18 will hit. So okay. Ahead. points of damage. At level 9 is it still a d8? Or is it a... It changes to a d10 d at level 10. Okay, so I'm still d8. Okay, so 24 points of damage, correct? And now he has to do a saving throw, I believe? Yeah, I think it's uh, 8 plus my proficiency plus something he has to beat. damage, but you try to menace him to fear him, he doesn't seem to be affected by fear. Well, that's too bad, because I'm going to hit him more now. Okay, hit him again. Uh, 19 will hit. Of course. Jesus Christ. The damage that you do with this. Yes! <laughs> there it is! There it is. Okay. I'm going to need you to roll me another attack and if this one lands, you, uh... Yup, it does. <laughs> Go ahead and roll me a percentile, and you're gonna add 9 to this percentile roll. Are you serious? What the heck? 10? 19! 
<laughs> okay. So because this, we decided to roll with the critical hit table and things are different on here, you just do regular damage. You don't actually do any extra damage. However, you do it in such a way that you cannot roll ones or twos on the damage dice. So go ahead and roll your great axe. So it's just a D, it's a D12 plus your mod, so you don't get the secondary dice. Uh, you did roll a one though, so re-roll that D12. Uh, so an 8 plus 8, because that's what your modifier is right now, <laughs> is 16 points of damage, and you actually have another plus 2 for the next round. So your <laughs> AC is now 24. And I will take my bonus action to say, get wrecked, bro. Alright, you say that. He doesn't really seem to understand, because he doesn't have a head. But, uh, for the most part, you feel like you got the message across. Uh, so I didn't roll for Rugar. I'm just gonna remove him from the combat for the current moment. Uh, so Ash, it's your turn. Okay, so I am going to. Uh, he's my favorite enemy at the moment. Sure. Um, I am. Yeah, you hit him three times. Okay, right, just checking. Yep, no problem. Um, I'm going to acid infuse it. Okay. And okay, so I'm gonna. Go ahead. That's a bonus action. Uh huh. And a twenty-four does hit. So go ahead. Okay. And damage for your bow, your oath bow, first. 10 damage plus 3d6. 15. So 25 plus your d8 of acid. Plus another 4. Four so 29 points of damage with one arrow. Jeez. You guys are really wrecking my monsters. I don't know if this is just one out the front. Uh, go ahead, so you have another attack. Alright. 23? Yep. Go ahead. Roll your oath bow and your oath bow damage. <laughs> 11. Yeah, Plus eight. eight. So nineteen more. <laughs> Something freaking cool, headless horseman guy. Reckon. And uh, I, I, uh, I go ahead and and oh no, never mind. I'll just go and um, move back. Okay. So you move back. Yeah. It's now his turn. So uh, he. could be so mean. He's gonna swing his longsword at Scarlet, because she's right next to him. Um, and I'm gonna roll. Okay. 21. A 21 so... doesn't hit you right now. Oh yeah, because I'm hasted. Yeah. And you have a plus two from your super crit. You have 24 oh, yeah. right now. Oh, what were you going to say, Eric, real quick? It's fine. Okay. I was going to have you use luck, but you already said it doesn't hit. It does not hit. So he's going to roll again. And that misses as well. Uh, That's his turn. Tordic? All right. I'm going to... Tell Tear, mm. let me down. Says, All right, bro, got you. And he lets you down. And I start casting a spell. I cast right. Flame Strike. Okay. Uh, we'll say that you can, because of the situation, you're able to make it in such a way where you won't hit Scarlet with the Fire Tornado. That would be awesome. That you make. Thank you. Uh, so go ahead and roll. He's going to make a deck save. Yeah, 17. 17. Nine. <laughs> so he takes 29, twenty-nine points of damage, fire and radiant. Uh, so I got hasted, right? Yeah. So you have another attack. Yep. All right. So I'm gonna run out to him, get my mace, yep. hit him twice in the face. Okay. 
Okay. Or the board, I should say. Yes. Uh, go ahead. I can see your bonus action. Go ahead. Can I use uh, yeah. work on the lesson? So 23, that will hit. Yep, go ahead. <laughs> Nine. And then Plus the D8. Yeah. 16 damage. All right. The next attack. I'm going to use luck. Okay. An 18 will hit. Son of a bitch. Seven. All right, great. Anything That'll else you want to do? Yeah, no, good. that's it. That's you're feeling good. Right? You're feeling good about yourself? That's good. Yeah. Um. Well. Shannon, it's your turn. Um, I'm just going to... Since everybody seems like they got this under control, I'm gonna firebolt him. Okay. Going attack. Yeah, that'll hit. <laughs> yeah, that'll also hit. I feel bad for him. Right? Me, me too. I feel bad for him too. Uh, Alright. Is there anything else on your turn? Nope, I'm good. Alright. Scarlet. Go ahead. Okay, since I won't be here for much longer, I'm going to use my one natural 20 uh, okay. that I gifted myself. <laughs> so go ahead and roll me another, just roll me an attack. Um, yep, you're good. So go ahead and roll on the critical hit table. 1d10, pull, or 1d100 plus 9. Fifty-two. Sixty-one. Sixty-one, I'm sorry, sixty-one. All right, so, um, you're gonna do a regular, you're gonna do critical hit damage, so go ahead and do that. He would start bleeding if he had blood, but he doesn't have blood, so it doesn't work. But, so, that was, uh, I need you to roll another d12. Do pumpkin seeds start leaking out of him? <laughs> well, so... 29, yes, pumpkin seeds start spilling out of his of his head hole. Mmm, those are good when you roast them. As you smash into this guy and just destroy him, you smash that pumpkin and his head just like, his again, pumpkin seeds just raining out as if you, an arterial spray of pumpkin seeds off the top of his head uh, as the horse dissipates into nothingness and he drops to the ground. Is he dead? <laughs> uh, mo mostly dead. Well, uh, then yeah. I'm going to keep hitting. Uh, all right, <laughs> so you start hacking away at this body uh, and you do... He's dead. You're convinced that he's dead. Great. I'm going to gather the pumpkin seeds for a snack later. Okay, got him. <laughs> let's see if I can find anything else on his body. Because I'm just like, well, let's just clean this up and keep going then. Alright, so go ahead and make me a perception check. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, I'm going to re-roll that. You do have a re-roll. <laughs> Slightly better. <sighs> um, the sword that he has has quite the keen edge to it. I will take that. <laughs> and it looks like and, quite a magical sword. Oh. oh god, I'm afraid it's cursed. <laughs> uh, well, you do. Uh, um, Shannon, you know Shannon is great at picking up cursed objects. She did it once before. Hey Shannon, come check this this sword out. <laughs> I'm not worried because I don't think she can lift it. Okay. I'll go over and uh, do a detect magic on it. Uh, it is magic. It has extremely powerful enchantment magic with a weird, slight hint of necromancy. Not not, not like a damaging amount, you feel. Yes, ask him if he wants to blave. Um, anyway, uh, yes. Mm. She's not about that seems necromancy fine. life. <laughs> oh, you're Tell not gonna... The necromancy, yeah. What? Yeah, seems fine. Uh, All right. Well, that's... 
we'll say as you guys are traveling down the road, getting ready to camp for the evening, uh, you take the time to to learn and, and spend an hour over the, this short rest as you travel, learning what this is. This sword. This is a Vorpal longsword. This is a plus three longsword that on the roll of a natural 20 will instantly decapitate an opponent. Which I'd like to point out for anybody who says any shit about what I do to these people one way or another. I I decided to not use an automatic critical hit that I have this session to decapitate Scarlet. Which I could have done. You were the only one within range at the time and I have an auto crit that I could have used. But I didn't, because I'm nice. The gods are kind. <laughs> yes. Now, had I gotten to Herrick, Ted totally gone. I'm just kidding. What? <laughs> I'm just kidding. Just kidding. Um, well, I got lucky. Hopefully that would work. Probably not. Uh, so, yeah. yeah I'm kind of yeah, pro lucky with would, lucky the would work to oh, reset yeah, the... Maybe. Oh, awesome. What was that? I missed that. I said I might have a bro who might have revivify. <laughs> yeah, but you can't revivify with a head removed. You need, Not you with need, that attitude. You need a, you need a resurrection to bring somebody back from the dead when their head has been removed. Well, thanks. Mm -hmm. You know, you're pretty great, and you're you're like I don't know you that well, so I don't want to like just totally crush your day. Uh, plus, I <laughs> let's mean... never get to know each other more than this then. <laughs> <laughs> well, I guess we'll have to see how things go um, in the future in other games and things that we play. So, uh, you guys end up camping for the evening, uh, you realizing that you have this badass Vorpal sword, and, uh, you, uh, you guys wake up the next morning, um, on your trek towards, uh, the town of Sleepy Hollow, somewhere off to the east, um, and right around here we're gonna kind of, I didn't have a really good outro for this, so... You know what? Who's coming in next time? It's, uh... It's... Homer and Amy and Herrick and Scarlet. Oh, that's kind of perfect. So, you guys wake up the next morning and you hear... <laughs> and you look as coming through the trees is a cloud giant. Upon his shoulders is a normal-looking human male. And a wood elf, and he just looks to Brody and Tyr and Bob, and is like, "Bro!" And they're all super excited to see Brosif as he returns from his mission, his brotastic mission, with your other companions. And it's just like a serious hardcore bro down as Brosif, Bob, Tyr, Brody, and Scarlet and Tordek are just like broing out. You've never, Scarlet's never met Brosif before. He's a cloud giant, bro. He's Tyr, Tordex Mount's brother, his, uh, his, his, like, twin brother, who's a cloud giant, who was originally fighting, you know, well, you know the story, he was originally fighting over Tordek. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> bros are bros are bros. We're friends. Exactly. So, I... you guys will say that he tells you of, like, this serious bro-tastic party happening on a cloud giant flying castle. Anybody who's anybody who's a bro is going to be there. And you guys, you need to be there. Well, I'll be there. I'm a somebody. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So he's like, I got us tickets if you want in. To the Let's gun show or to the party? Hey! <laughs> and everybody flexes as soon as you say that. And it's just like, and it's just like this epic, like there's an explosion in the sky, like, it's epic. There's fireworks from nowhere. Like, as the guns are flexed, like, each person's, like, biceps shoot off a firework into the sky. Like, a really distorted version of that Katy Perry firework video where her boobs <laughs> shoot fireworks. This is just, like, <laughs> biceps shooting fireworks. And, like, it's just, like, it's a, it's epic and amazing. Um, so there you go. That happens. And he's, like, uh, do you get you guys, you bros, ready? Just one second. I got a thing to do for the rest of the people here. All right. I'm gonna cast a uh, death ward on all of them. All right. So. Well, three of them, I should say. Yeah. 
So, for the next 24, or the next 8 hours? 8 hours. Uh, when you would go down to 0 HP, we go to 1 instead. Thanks to the Death Ward. Um, and he drops off uh, basically Alexander, who some of you know, some of you don't know, and Drusilia, who some of you know. I think who everybody knows. Uh, or no, actually, some of you don't know. You guys don't know. Uh, Shannon and Scarlet don't know this wood elf. But Tordic, you know. And um, he's like, well, bros. So I bro out. And you're like, we'll reach down and offer to pick up Tordic, Tyr, Brodian, and Scarlet. To like, because he's, he's so broad <laughs> that he can fit you all on his shoulders. Okay, Scarlet's going to try to flip onto the hand really cool. All right. <laughs> No. <laughs> You're like, I got, I got this, and you trip over his pinky and you <laughs> land like you face plant. But you face plant into his hand, but then you just start doing push ups like you meant to do that. <laughs> You're like, ah, bro. Got it. <laughs> Want to see just... how long I can plank? <laughs> <laughs> um, and he's like, actually, bro, yeah, you're cool. <laughs> so, he's just All got, right, like, we his... may not make it to the party, though. He's like, no, bro, I'll carry you while we get there. And he's just, like, holding you in his hand as you're planking uh, in his hand. Everybody else on his shoulder, and you just planked out. All right. She's just going to be like, later, bro. As he, he like, up. he, like, gives, like, a little, like, a uh, hang ten thing to you guys. Like, what up, bros? And he just runs off into the forest, bounding, <laughs> leaving Drusilia and Alexander behind. Uh, Shannon, this is one of the weirdest sights you've ever seen, and you've seen a lot. Getting <laughs> <laughs> it down in a notebook. Yeah, right? This is all getting taken down, so you'll never forget this greatness. Um, so, with that, we're probably going to bring this three-hour session to an end. Thank you, everyone, for all the donations. This is amazing. Um, we are at uh, $1,427 donated. Uh, we are going for 1811 because if we hit 1811, we nudge out the fourth person on the Wizards of the Coast team, <laughs> who's a Wizards of the Coast employee, who's also a girl, so I feel like she has a better chance of getting donations no matter what because boobs. Um, so let's let's break that gender stereotype. Bros, yeah. not boobs. Bros before boobs. Hex, <laughs> not titties. Yes, exactly. Exactly. Uh, so, uh, I don't know if I could say any words that make that's just better than that. That's a great way to end that. But uh, why don't we have? Um, okay, why don't you, we have you tell us? Um, well, you already talked, you don't really have anything that you're doing on the internet, so why don't you tell us what you thought about, you watched most of the other campaign as time went on, I saw you in the chat, you were awesome and interactive, and everybody appreciated it. I know I did. Uh, so why don't you kind of give us a little bit of feedback on your thoughts on the campaign, your thought playing the second time around, and again, to our two returning characters, any advice that you would give to them. Yeah, I mean, I gotta say, when I when I started out and I briefly mentioned that she was a bro, I kind of just meant that she hung out with more guys in her time. Uh, but I really like how my character developed to full bro. I feel like she's the Super Saiyan bro at this point. Um, I just think it's great. I mean, we, we had a lot of people. Pick, pick the people you're going to play with. Pick some cool ones so that when very serious plots turn into bros and gourds like it's just a fun time so i just keep playing have good attitudes and always use a crit table because that was really fun <laughs> yeah um i'm very excited to see when my friend sean who typically plays in my tuesday night game shows up to play at 9 a.m having watched a little bit early on when it was slightly more serious and then missed probably the majority of this that's happened and it's just gonna show up and there's people riding barbarians and trying to fight the great pumpkin like he's i don't know what he's gonna think about it we'll have to see so herrick how about you what do you do on the internet and and all the other stuff that i mentioned because i don't feel like saying it again well i dm at uh, power word entertainment on twitch uh, we're kind of in a break right now 
as there's a link. Uh, this 24 hour that you're doing actually, Ted, yes. inspired me to do my own. Nice. I'm not sure exactly when, yeah. but I will get my Twitter up and running, tweet it there, and I'll share it to, uh, retweet it to Ted. Yes, absolutely. So you can share it all to, you, to, to everybody. Yes, uh, I will tell you just real quick to interject before I let you get to your thoughts and your uh, your advice. Um, the actual official Extra Life Day, we'll call it, like where the big day for Extra Life, I think is November 5th. Um, that is their big, like the big Extra Life, Extra Life Drive Day. Because um, Extra Life is a gaming thing uh, designed for... Um, actually primarily designed originally for video games 24 hour video game streams not necessarily the same game but video game related um but they decided that like this kind of this in the mid-teens of november is their tabletop appreciation weekend so that's why i picked this weekend to do it also the fact that we were literally an hour off the end of the official wizards of the coast 25 or 24 hour stream uh, so that's another big day that people play games for extra life just to throw that out there um, if you guys are planning on doing anything uh, so Herrick back to your thoughts on the campaign the character everything that's gone down and advice for Homer and Amy when they return to this short so I saw the beginning of this campaign it was very serious I came back roughly half an hour before I had to get on here which was like around 9 o'clock my time I did not know what happened at all. <laughs> it was chaos. <laughs> I was not expecting my character to progress the way he did, but it was awesome. And just expect the unexpected. Yes, absolutely. Uh, so I just, again, a quick point to all of you guys that made your own Extra Life pages, because there's a handful of you here. If you raised at least $25 on your own Extra Life page, you will be receiving a fancy... Not in the vein of this Extra Life official Adventure League certificate where they will give you an item for use in official Dungeons & Dragons play because you are a member of Team Dungeons & Dragons. For instance, last year, I got this potion to use in Extra Life play, which is a potion of Extra Life that when you drink it cures you of all poisons, diseases, and conditions and instantly heals you to full hit points. That was the item that I got last year for that that I haven't used because I haven't played in Adventure League stuff, but you guys will both be getting one. They also raised over $50,000 as a team right now for Wizards of the Coast and the Dungeons and Dragons team, uh, which allowed them to, um, what's it called, to uh, reveal images from Volo's Guide to Monsters, the upcoming uh, Dungeons and Dragons source book that's coming out later this year, and they revealed two uh, interesting new monsters. Uh, one is a Kirin, for those of you who are fans of uh, kind of Japanese folklore, a kind of unicorn dog deity almost. Uh, and they also revealed the Flail Snail, which is literally a snail that instead of eye stalks has four like pseudopod flails that it can hit people with. It's ridiculous. You should look it up. <laughs> that is <So>. ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yep, and that's official dungeon. That's official D and D monster that's being added to the game. Just to throw that out. There. Oh my god! And I don't know about the other thing, but I like dogs and I like unicorns. So yeah, it's like a golden unicorn that uh, that has magic. So there you go. Um, all right. So um, why don't we? Uh, Ash and Shannon, your characters will both level up to level ten. So congrats to you guys. I'm going to throw up the Be Right Back and clear some disk space off my computer because I'm starting to run out of room as I've been recording this entire game. Uh, so i got to finish <laughs> clearing out some, some hard drive space in the meantime here while I go, I don't know what to eat. I still have half a pizza, but I'm like weirdly still hungry. Maybe another cup of coffee. I don't know. Uh, and we're going to get Amy and Homer back in here to pick back up where they left off. We will bid adieu to Herrick and Katie as they leave to find sleep or hang around in the chat and, and comment about bros. Strive to get donations here, guys. We are, I just, just, again, humbled and wowed that we've raised $1,427 in 
16 hours, 17 hours, when I had only set out to raise 500. This is amazing. You guys are fantastic. Um, again, you can donate to alter the way the game is played, give stuff to players, take stuff away from them. Uh, add your shit right now. So, uh, anyway guys, I'm going to throw up the BRB, switch the music around. And uh, again, thank you guys so much for playing. We had a blast having you here. Thanks for being bros. Bros for life. If there's not <laughs> enough broing while I'm still on here, I'm gonna make a comment. My voice. Is <laughs> well, I will point out that the only bro who remains is Bob. Uh, Ash is now. <laughs> only... That's right. I'm concerned about how this stream is gonna go. <laughs> Could I left here behind? behind? Alright, see you guys. Yeah, thank you guys. See y'all later.